All right, well, Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas Day. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm actually a permanent deacon in the Catholic Church, so it's been a very busy weekend uh, for all of us. The fourth Sunday of Advent was also uh, Christmas Eve, so uh, nonstop uh, church services, liturgy, as we would call it, uh, this weekend. Finally done with all of that, and we opened our Christmas presents. Now, I haven't posted a lot. It's been quite some time since I posted any content of significance on my YouTube channel and I uh, had some wonderful surprises this Christmas uh, most of which is merch with the Iron Wolf Overland logo that my daughter created for me. So enough about that the reason I'm staring at the uh, H3's back window as I tape this is that's one of my Christmas presents also other than the merch. Now the smartest way to make use of your back storage in a Hummer H3 especially if you pull a trailer like my uh, M416 here where my trailer hitch does not stick out very far. So when I'm connected to the trailer, and yes, I could extend the hitch, but I don't want to for, for other reasons, uh, mostly uh, angle of uh, departure, etc. cetera, um, ease of maneuvering it when you're trying to back up. I like to keep it the way it is, but that means I can't open the rear hatch uh, this far. So you can really only open the rear hatch a few degrees. It's enough that I can get in there and access the back hatch area. Uh, I can access my fridge and things like that. But for example, this area here on the other side of that window is almost impossible for me to access without the uh, rear gate being all the way open. So the ideal situation would be one of those cool little bat wing kits like they do on some other uh, SUVs. Unfortunately, I've never seen one for the Hummer H3 and I have neither the time, patience or resources or skill uh, just to bust one out. Someday I may do that. I may go ahead and remove that glass and make a little bat wing access. That would be cool because that way, even when I couldn't open the full uh, distance of the back gate, I could still access the cargo area. So I'll show you what I am going to do today that was a Christmas present. Um, and that's kind of the next best thing. And that's assuming that you can get into your back cargo area you put a molly panel up in these windows. You can see they sit fairly deep within the truck. So that's quite a bit of space uh, to take advantage of. Now what I've done in the past is either with suction cups, like I had this one here, I just took it down today as I'm kind of messing around. I put, uh, for example, these little molly pouches. This one just has a battery operated amber light for when you're on a dusty trail and people need to be able to see from, me, uh, <coughs> from behind you. And I just use these high quality suction cups on the glass. You can still see the little circle pattern there probably. Um, and I've hung that whole soft molly panel before. I've hung individual uh, little uh, devices there. But this is a much better use of the space, a firm molly panel that uh, then I can hang all that kind of stuff that stays with the truck. I'll probably still use the soft panel because I use it more for uh, the tools I need to set up my rooftop tent on my M416 trailer when I get to camp. If you've seen my other videos, I raise it up and uh, attach little clamps on it. So that's what I'm going to do now. There's not much to it. I'll put the link to this company in the uh, description, of, excuse me, description of the video. And you can see from mounting hardware, unfortunately they don't offer any instructions. I guess it's kind of a joke. I mean, what would the instructions say? Uh, and I have it on good authority because a lot of people have bought these and posted them on Facebook in the uh, H3 forums that uh, they work fine. The plastic is sufficiently strong that just putting these fasteners in there uh, gives you enough strength to put fairly heavy things on these panels. You can also tell the geometry, the way those tongues are, uh, it, it's going to hold on to there pretty well. I originally thought of doing something like that before I went with the soft panels, but I really overthought it. I was trying to find a way to anchor into the steel behind the trim and you know someone smarter than I was who has access to good CNC equipment just started selling these uh, on the <coughs> internet again I'll post a link and realize you know you don't need to overthink it just put the little tabs on there put some uh, uh, screws into the firm plastic there and they're plenty strong to hold your gear so I'll take a few uh, shots just of uh, the install but you can see there's not much to it just kind of decide how you want to fit it in there mark the holes uh, anchor the screws and you're done Okay, so after playing around a bit, I cleaned everything very thoroughly since I won't be able to access that area without removing the mon molly panel. And I think that's about the best way to fit it. It's not like a micrometer fit thing. The tongues don't sit flush, which is okay. Again, this isn't exactly a high-pressure seal that we're uh, 
putting in place. I tried to make the panel mostly level to the earth uh, as opposed to matching the angle of the window. I think things will hang from the molly panel more efficiently that way. And I did decide I'm going to go ahead and use an eighth inch bit uh, to make a pilot hole. I just played with a Phillips screwdriver trying to drive one of the mounting screws by hand. Decided I don't like how it was behaving. So I'm going to drill a tiny pilot hole, see how that goes. All right. So that kind of shines a little light on there. Nothing clever here, just definitely my past thoughts in this regard were overthinking it. Simple screws into the plastic. The plastic is plenty strong to support that. Good high quality powder coated molly panel. Very, very solid. So I'll put a couple items on there just to illustrate and that'll be it. So this is just a uh, Simple example of so one of the cheaper, simpler ways to do the molly panel. You can buy some really nice little setups on Amazon. In this case, many times I just do a simple uh, Velcro strip. So I just cut it off this roll and I'll put two on there and that'll hold my tire inflator on the molly panel. And that way I can rearrange it whenever I want, I just using little Velcro strips. And if you're wondering what that looks like from the outside, you know, only in certain lighting would the tint not completely hide what's in there. So for the most part, someone from outside the truck can't even tell that there's something mounted there. So again, you know, a bat wing flap would actually be more convenient on these trucks. These molly panels would still work. It would just be reverse. It would, I'd be using the backside of the molly panel from outside the truck. But uh, I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing that project on the H3. But uh, these certainly do enhance my ability to organize hand tools and little things that I need, like the flashlight and whatnot. Uh, so I'll get the other one up here as well. They sell them in pairs. And then I'll decide whether to keep that in the truck. That might go in the trailer. When I pull my trailer, there's not a lot of distance from the back hitch to the trailer hitch because of the way mine is configured, which is in most off-road uh, situations desirable. Just the problem is when you stop and you want to access the rear cargo area, you can imagine that uh, with the swing gate not going very far, it's really hard to get in here. So even with that configuration, this will still be easy for me to get at. So these will be the more likely used items. The less used items over there, because when I use the trailer, it won't be impossible to grab them off the molly, but it will be far more challenging. That's it for this little project. And I might take like a black Sharpie or something and color the heads of the screws so they don't stand out so much. Went ahead and opened the garage door for a little better lighting. Just that's the, uh, the way it turned out. I just took me, I don't know, 10-20 minutes. It was no big deal at all. So just pre-drilled with an eighth inch hole, used the screws provided, mounted the two molly panels, and then I just used, again, simple Velcro strips to fashion my round one holders. That little pouch has molly uh, attachments of its own, so it attached. The rest I just did with Velcro strips or these little uh, these little rings that shows up against the black background, like my ARB tire deflator just has I hooked on with one of those rings. So that's uh, concept one. We'll see how it goes. Very easy to reconfigure that. So on that side, this is just stuff that's always bouncing around the back of my truck. My coiled inflation hose for the CO2 tank, some bungees and a cargo net. There's some more bungees I'll decide later to, if I want to get cute with that. My amber trail light, my fuel spout for my jerry cans, inflator for the CO2 system, flashlight, pair of gloves, uh, and that's it. So that's round one. We'll see later if I do more. And that jobber, my soft molly, is going to be used to hold the tools that I use for the trailer. So I'll probably keep that on the trailer. This is just some more rubber straps and bungees and that's the uh since that toolkit comes in a case i don't do a soft roll i just kept that hard case that i don't mind letting flop around in the truck and then other stuff like this is tire repair kit and things like that um and i think i've got a 12 volt compressor in there in case co2 runs out um that stuff i just throw in and out with ammo cans so that's the latest incarnation and a wonderful christmas gift of these uh mps Molly panels for the Hummer H3. If you're curious about that logo, it's a uh, call it kind of a mashup, a synthesis if you prefer, of uh, kind of Mesoamerican styling with a tradition uh, from Lithuania. It's where my ancestors are from. 
The Iron Wolf is a symbol from their uh, history of the founding of their capital city. So it's been quite a while since I posted a video here, and that's essentially because I've been so busy with work and community activities, I really haven't had an opportunity to get back up to the UP. I haven't shown a ton of videos of my last couple visits to the UP because frankly it's mostly interesting to me. Most of the video I capture consists of me running around with a chainsaw, sometimes with helpers, usually by myself, bringing a lot of brush to the wood chipper and I'm basically finishing the corduroy and wood chip roads to allow us to drive around in our wooded acreage in the UP. That's the wood chip. Doesn't look that impressive. That is quite deep. So that's all the wood chips I uh, did today from everything I cut yesterday and some old stuff, but basically I staged a huge amount of material here and then some more back behind me over there and I chipped all that uh, today in about three, maybe four hours, probably closer to three. It took me somewhere between four to six hours to cut it and bring it over here. As you can see there's still plenty more fodder for the wood chipper around here. I was commenting a lot of these firs are going to probably have to come down just because they uh, grow fast and then die. So they're kind of classic widow makers. So definitely the cedars do fine and when there's any kind of a higher ground you'll see a maple or a yellow birch. And these guys are quite solid. I don't think I've ever seen one of these over in the forest. Pleasant surprise, the GoPro showed 86% battery besides being kind of sitting there and not charged for weeks and weeks before I drove up here to the UP. And then it immediately adjusted to 46%. That's probably just as well forced me to be brief. So sometimes I try to budget my time, not that I don't have an infinite amount of work to do on our acreage, but just to say it's got to be fun. So. Sometimes when I'm all sore from all the physical work I was doing, I just take a ride out to the lighthouse, just a few miles down the road, look out over the lake, and remind myself why I do all that work, because it is really just amazingly beautiful up here. So hopefully the windsock's doing its job and my voice can be heard over the, over the uh, sound of the wind there. And as always, it's just so gorgeous. But a couple of productive days. Just came up for a quick weekend. Took a couple days off work. One day to get up here. Which usually I can do better than that. But I didn't have time beforehand to pack. So one day really to pack and get up here. Set up camp in the dark. This time of year the days are short. Then after that, I uh, Friday was chainsaw day. Actually got a lot done with the chainsaws. And then today was wood chipper day where I cleared everything that I had stacked to chip from the chainsaw days. And once again realized it works. I mean the wood chips make such good forest roads, but it takes such an enormous amount of uh, deadfall and branches and small trees to generate much in the way of chips. So once again the rate limiting step and all that is me. It's how many hours I want to spend working. So and basically when I'm done being sore from head to foot, I stop and I just go back to the campsite, sit, relax, eat, and then once in a while take a little ride out here and look at nature's beauty. Again, the big new acquisition is tiny, the 4x4 one ton Dooley uh, Cummins Dodge Ram 3500. Trails aren't yet big enough for tiny, but uh, with an equipment trailer, tiny can easily haul the tractor and other types of stuff back and forth. I also have an M105A2 trailer that uh, is perfect for hauling large amounts of heavy material in and out of the forest. It's got the uh, build for it and the uh, tall tires and the extremely high ground clearance. So between Tiny and that trailer we can definitely start getting more serious about uh, managing the forest. All right then, a little bit of GoPro footage to cap off a nice weekend. 
gonna relax tonight, go to church tomorrow, head home. <laughs>